Hi everyone, welcome to episode 4. So uh, where we last left off, we'd basically got our projectiles colliding with stuff, and what we want to do now is before the projectile destroys itself, it needs to notify the object that it collided with that that object has been hit. So let's talk a bit about how this is going to be implemented, because it's not entirely straightforward. Um, say our projectile hit something, now we don't want it to have to check okay, does this object have a player script attached, or does it have an enemy script attached, or later on, does it have an obstacle script attached? Um, because those are all the, all the different scripts that need to be notified when they're hit by a projectile. So what we're going to do is create an interface called iDamageable, and uh, don't worry if you're not uh, familiar with interfaces, you will be shortly. Um, so this iDamageable interface will contain a method called takeHit, and then uh, the classes that need to be notified when they're hit by a projectile can implement the iDamageable interface, and when they implement it, they'll be forced to uh, include that take hit method. So the advantage, the whole sort of point of doing this, is that when the projectile hits something, it doesn't need to worry about what script is attached to that object that it's hit. It just needs to see whatever script it is, does it implement the iDamageable interface? Because if it does, then the projectile can safely call the takeHit method on that object. So hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm sure it will all become very clear as we implement it. Okay, back in action. Let us create a new C-sharp script called iDamageable. The big I just standing for interface, uh, as is the convention. And let's delete everything up to using Unity Engine. And I'm going to write uh, public interface i damageable. And uh, here we want to write that method void take it. Can give it a float parameter for how much damage it's it needs to take, and also a raycast hit parameter. Uh, just to provide it with some extra information, such as where it was hit, uh, for example. Um, and yeah, we don't need to provide any uh, actual body for this class, so we can just end it off with a semicolon. Now, going into the projectile class, how this is going to work is we'll say um, iDamageable, we can call this a damageable object, is equal to hit.collider, so the object we collide with, um, and then we're going to get the component iDamageable on that object. Now, of course, uh, not every object that it hits is guaranteed to have this attached to it, so we need to say if the damageable object is not equal to null, then we can say damageable object dot take hit, and we can pass in the variable damage that we'll create in a moment, and the raycast hit variable. Up uh, here I'm just going to say float damage equals 1. Alright, save, and uh, let's see, so our, our player and our enemy have some common ground in that they both they both need to be able to take damage and have health and die and all of that stuff. So rather than having them separately um, implement all of that stuff, let's create a sort of shared class called something like living entity that they can both inher inherit from. Have I written that correctly? I think I wrote entlitly. Um, all right, living entity. So now uh, in this class, let me just delete all of this stuff we can implement uh, iDamageable, so we say living entity extends mono behavior, and then we add a comma and tack on iDamageable. So if we save that and go into Unity now, um, you can see we get this error, living entity does not implement interface member iDamageable.takeHit. So uh, we're quite literally forced to implement this method. So we say public void take hit float, uh, what was it, damage, and the other thing was a raycast hit, which we can call hit. So we want a health variable so we can uh, take some damage. So up here let's create a protected float uh, health. Protected just meaning that uh, it, it's not going to be available to other classes and it won't appear in the inspector, 
but the derived classes, such as the player and the enemy, will still be able to access this variable. Um, so we can say health minus, oops, minus equals damage. And uh, if health falls below or hits zero, then we can call this method called die, which we'll create right now, uh, public void die. And let's create a protected bool dead to keep track of whether we're dead or not. And if we die, then we are indeed dead. So we can set that equal to true. And uh, it's probably not a bad idea to say if health less than equal to zero, and if we're not already dead, okay, then we can die. Um, all right, that looks that looks good. Um, I, I don't want to set health a value directly. I'd rather have a public uh, a public float here for my starting health, and then uh, we can have um, public void start. And in the start method, we can say that health is equal to our starting health. Now uh, we just need to go into our enemy and player classes. And so instead of extending directly from one behavior, we're going to uh, we're going to extend living entity. Likewise with um, with enemy. Let me open that up. Okay, extends living entity. Um, one thing to be cautious of is that uh, if we've got these two methods here, start and in living entity start, the uh, the one in enemy is going to completely overwrite the one in in uh, living entity. So this this line of code will never be called. So what we want to do is we want to uh, after public, we want to add the virtual keyword. So it's a public virtual void start. Then what we do in the enemy class is we say, okay, this is now a public override void start. So we override the, the start method here, and then we can call it by saying base class dot start. Okay, so that way they both get called and um, we can do the same thing in player. So public override void start, and we want to call base.start. Okay, um, let's let's add a, a line of code to this die method here, which just destroys the object. So we can say game object dot destroy game object. Okay, um, let's try this out now. Uh, let's let's give our our enemy a, a starting health, um, maybe of five. I'll give the player a starting health as well. Uh, where's that player script over here? Give it a starting health of ten, and let's see if we can destroy this enemy now. So shoot it, and yeah, we can destroy it. That's that's nice. Um, there is a possibility for an error occurring at the moment. Uh, in the enemy class, because of our update, our update path um, coroutine, it once the object's destroyed, it could still it could still run this once and try to set the destination of the pathfinder, and then it's going to return an error. Um, so what we should do before we say pathfinder dot set destination is just uh, is just say that if 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 we're not dead. Then, uh, then do this. Okay, so that uh, should prevent that sneaky little error from ever occurring. Uh, we've basically achieved what we set out to do in this episode. Um, there are just a few tiny things that are that are bothering me a little bit. I want to go back to the living entity class, and uh, for some reason I made the start method public, uh, which is really not necessary. I'm going to change that to protected, and I'm going to do the same for this this die method over here. And because we changed that, we also need to go into the player and enemy class and change their start methods to protect it as well. Okay, and I think I did a similar thing uh, with the uh, in the player controller class with the fixed update method. 
Um, that also really does not need to be public. So I'll just remove that, make it private again. Um, yeah, okay. Cool, so that's everything for this episode. Um, in the next episode, we're going to look at creating a spawn system. Um, until then, thanks for watching. Cheers.